Hi everyone. Recently I made this rustic American flag and I had a lot of questions about how I designed and did the stars. Today I'm going to show you how I did it using the V-Carve desktop. Hi everyone. If this is the first time to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And down below, hit that little bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload videos. As most of you know, I upload videos several times a week. So go ahead and hit that bell, subscribe, and you won't miss out on a thing. So let's get started with today's project. The first thing when designing using any software, I want to be able to let you know there are probably a dozen or more ways to do the same thing. The designing of the stars that I'm going to be doing today for the flag is just one way. It's the way that I'm choosing to do it. It's not to say that there are not many other ways to do it. The first thing we're going to do is open up and create a new file. So I'm just going to click on create a new file. That's going to open up this window. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using a single sided. The size of the sign that I'm going to be doing today is eight and a half by seven inches. The material thickness is three quarters of an inch. So we'll leave that alone. The Z position it's going to be on the material surface and I did leave out we are going to be working in inches. My XY datum position I'm going to put at the bottom left hand corner that is going to be the easiest to do with what I want to do today and the rest as far as modeling resolution and the color are really fine I don't need to do anything with that. So I'm just going to click OK and that's going to create my work area to be able to start designing. The first thing I want to do is just show you the star and you can do various things with it. I'm just going to do nothing at this point and click and there we have the star. The problem with this generic star that's in here is these lines are not straight. I do not want these curved lines. I want it where it's directly straight across a nice sharp five point star. And to be able to do that, you can, we're just going to click another one, you can use these tools over here to be able to change the star shape and size. Now first thing, I want to use a five point star. I'm not worried about the coordinates at this point, but I do want to change the size of the star. Now this is the outer radius, so it's going to go from the center of the star to the outermost tip of the point of the star. And the flag that we're going to be doing today, the star is going to be three quarters of an inch for the total height. So half of that is three eighths of an inch. So that's going to be 0.375 of an inch is going to be my outer radius. Now, if I create that, okay, that's going to give me a star smaller than my original one, but it still has that same exact shape. Okay, so how do I change that? Well, first thing, let's close this. We're going to go ahead and remove these stars. But I don't need those. And let's go back and create another star. The five point is what we wanted. And again, I'm not worried about the coordinates. The 3.75 is with the size of the star. But look at this, the inter radius percentage. That is what is going to change to make everything happen. So if I create that star, but it's going to give me those curved lines like it did before. But if I change this, let's change it down to, let's say, 30. And we'll close that window for a moment. 
and look at this star. Now you see how it's coming in. It's not curved outward anymore, it's curved in. So what I have done in experimenting, let's go ahead and we'll create a new star. And this time I'm going to move this over so it's not going to be on top. But I'm going to change this to 38. And that has worked out quite well. Now you can see the two stars side by side. And this is the type of star that I'm looking to be able to get. That has nice straight edges on all the points. And that's what I want to be able to accomplish. So that's the settings that we're going to be using today for the star. I want to give just a quick recap. The star that we're going to be using today is going to be 5 point. It's going to be the outer radius at 0.375. The inner radius is 38. And when I create that, that creates my star exactly the way that I want it. That's what I want it to be able to look like. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clear this off my screen. I'm going to do that just by highlighting everything. I'm going to right click the mouse and cut. So now I have a clean slate again. In laying out the field for my stars, I'm going to use guidelines. And I know that I have six stars across. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab my guidelines and I'm going to roughly drop in six guidelines approximately where they will be positioned. And it's just all I'm doing is coming over to the sidebar, clicking the left mouse button, pulling it over, and dropping it. And I'm going to do that six times and that will give me my guidelines. Now we'll be doing the same thing from the top and I have five stars coming down the side and one, two, there will be three, four, and five. All right, that gives me all the guidelines that I'm going to need to be able to put in the first 30 stars. Now all I need to be able to do is how do I line this exactly where I want it? I've shown you already how we can just, with the mouse, hold the left mouse button down and move left and right on the guideline and we can position it. It also has the position keyed into it, like that's 1.3 of an inch, 1.4, and so on. And that measurement is from this left side of my border. So now then, to be able to position this exactly where I want it, I can hit on the right mouse, and it gives me this window. And what I'm looking to be able to do, and this did take a little bit of math, but I wanted that position to be at 0.946 of an inch. Then I can close that window, and that puts this guideline exactly where I want it. Then I can come over to the next one, right click, and I know on this one currently it's at 2.45 and I actually need it at 2.267. So I'm going to click on that and close it. So I'm going to do that with each of the different guidelines to position it exactly where I want it. And going from top to bottom, I'll do the same. Okay, to put the stars in place, I'm going to open up the window for the star. We know our settings are correct. So I can come over here, and that marks my coordinates. And I can put it right there on that spot, and I know that's exactly where I want it to be with the guidelines. I know there's other ways to do this, but this was just a real simple way for me to be able to do it. So I have those six stars in place. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and put these stars coming down alright using the guidelines I now have the layout for all of my stars exactly where I want it okay for the remaining 20 stars they're going to be located in between here I went ahead and just quickly added some guidelines because I know exactly where I needed to have it where that's dead center of that circle so by clicking on the star again and doing the same thing I'll just line that up with the coordinates and where I want it and that gives me the exact location of the stars now that all the stars are in place I just need to go up now and create the toolpath so I'm going to go up here and highlight this and it opens up the window on the right hand side and what we're going to be doing is selecting first we'll go through this in material setup and verify that all this is correct with that done we're going to select the v-carve and the settings that I want to be able to have this is going to be the start depth is going to be by zero now in the tool bit selection it's at 90 degrees and it's a half inch bit that's the bit that I'm going to use but I do want to highlight this because in the settings I can change what is happening with my bit during the car and in the tool library the one that I want to change is the plunge rate it has a default setting of 20 inches per minute and I have found at least on my machine that that's a little bit aggressive so in this example I'm going to change this to 20 inches per minute which I have done and I'm going to click OK now this changes because I edit here editing at this point will change only the settings for this particular carve and not select it for every single carve now looking at the rest of these settings there's really nothing that I need to be able to do so now I can change this name I'm just gonna put in stars okay and then I can calculate the tool path and it's given me the no vectors selected which is absolutely correct because I need to highlight this entire field and then I can hit calculate and that gives me the the toolpath. If I want to see that, I can preview selected toolpath. And what I'm going to do is slow this down just a little bit. Okay, and now we can see it actually cutting out the stars. And there we have it. That's what it's going to look like. Now we don't have a yellow flag for background. So let's go ahead and change the color to the blue. So we can come up here, have the drop down window, drop into blue, and there we go. That gives me my blue. Now we can't have blue stars, so the machined area color, we're going to click on the global fill, and I'm going to highlight that, click on white, and now it shows that I have my white stars. Okay, I went ahead and closed that window. Last thing that I would need to do is be able to save the toolpath and be able to generate the G code. The G code that we're using is the X carve and it is in inches, and this is what I use on all of mine. And once you change that, you really should not have to change it again. So now I can save the toolpath. And that will Thanks for watching the day, and please remember to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, have fun, be safe, take care now.